go. And we have Rick Hendrickson, a radio engineer and a full-time radio person on Thank TV. You. On TV. Is this your TV debut? Frightening. Uh, yes. You, you, you kind of have a face for radio, though. I do. <laughs> yeah. I would have combed my hair before I came. But. Okay. <laughs> and we have Mike Brown, journalist, and he's becoming a semi-regular right? here. Right, thanks for having Was me Was this back. your fourth appearance? Fourth time. Fourth time, yep. okay. So what we have in common here is a love of the arts, a love of pro wrestling, and a love of just uh, life in general. So, Mike Brown, tell us about the Hulk Hogan Appreciation Night. At yes, Madison Square Garden. that was uh, a week ago, Friday, at the Garden. Um, really good crowd. I was, uh, was happy to see a good crowd. Um, you know, the show itself was pretty good, um, but the Hulk Hogan thing I really liked. I, I'm a Hulkamaniac from okay. way back, and uh, it was nice to see the Outsiders come out, Jimmy Hart. Um, Flair was a bit of a surprise to me, um, but it was a really nice night. Uh, Triple H came out with a couple of garden representatives who were resoundingly booed after he said, please don't boo them. <laughs> then uh, he was presented with a big picture that someone had taken mm -hmm. back in the day. And then finally they raised the, uh, the banner. And I totally fell for it. I thought it was going to be up there forever in the rafters. Yeah, with Willis Reed. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and it came down the very next day. Uh, so they, uh, they said it will be somewhere in the garden. That's right, like uh, the toilet on the third floor to the go. left. <laughs> That's what my father said. Yeah. <laughs> I also hit up uh, the Coliseum last Sunday. Yeah. So how was the wrestling itself? Uh, for the garden show, the wrestling was really good. Really good? Yeah, okay. I enjoyed the show. Um, I even sat through the ladies' match. I never do. That's usually when I get up. But it was a good, solid show. The Coliseum wasn't as solid, um, probably because it was only about maybe a little more than half because of the weather i think you know it was pretty snowy um some of the same matches uh the coliseum wasn't as sharp as the garden and what if i were to play devil's advocate and say for 25 to 125 dollars a ticket it damn well should be good you're, you're absolutely right you're absolutely right you know you go to an indie show and pay 20 25 dollars and a lot of times the shows are tighter yeah. than some wwe shows i agree i saw the ring of honor pay-per-view anybody see that Oh, yeah. What'd you think? It was not the best, but still better than WWE. Exactly. I've seen Ring yeah. of Honor put on better shows, but in comparison, it's high art. Um, the Young Bucks and um, Red Dragon, excellent, yeah. excellent match. Yeah. They always put on, uh, you know, it's, it's so shocking that WWE has such a huge budget and they decide to put on the things that they do. And Maybe they you didn't contact Guy Cutler. Ring of Honor or Nice W, whatever the real quick. Show's better even when it's not their best work. It's, it's a waste, in my opinion. <laughs> any uh, take on uh, WrestleMania, Ro Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, or any of the other matches, guys? Steve, anybody? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I hate to see Daniel Bryan in the middle of mid-card mid anyway, like everyone, but uh, I just... I just don't have interest as, like I used to anymore. If I don't see WrestleMania, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I watch WrestleMania every uh, year because um, it's like um, our version of the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's I the know, wrestling know, fan I know, I know, Super Bowl. So uh, my, my wife and I are married five years, and we're going to have a uh, fifth anniversary slash WrestleMania party, which is the ultimate in romance there when you, you think about it. <laughs> Actually, isn't it? WrestleMania slash That's right. The WrestleMania comes first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My wife's actually working that day, so she's going to come like by the better third yet. match. This is very romantic. It's even better. She'll, she'll miss the Miz. If any of you guys want to come over, you're welcome, and uh, we'll have plenty of junk food, and uh, you know, it'd be a beautiful thing. So, Rick, what, yeah. what what's your take on uh, radio in 2015? This is your field of expertise and experience. It's an exciting time, man. W why is that? Well, you know, when we started, you and I, well, you've done it longer than I have, but we started with Legends Radio. It was, you had to listen to it on your computer. And now, you know, 2014, 15, 16, they got the smartphones, they got the tune-in going into the cars. So you can get it anywhere you want it at any time, live and on demand. And I, it's just an awesome change. It's, you know, a lot of terrestrial stations are hurting, but places like Madhouse are doing well with their stuff. Right. Mad, Madhouse TV is now doing radio as well, and uh, that's exciting. 
Rick, Rick set me up my show with, the, with my mobile app. Yeah, you know, and mobile apps and tune in. You can get anywhere. You, it's like back in the day, you had to sit in front of the computer and listen to it. Now you can drive on the Jersey Turnpike and hear it or drive yeah, up here. People can listen to classic pop culture on their phone. It's, it really is amazing mm -hmm. if you think about it. So who have you had on recently? Well, um, there's a great British performer named Terry Sylvester. He was in a group called The Hollies. Sure. Right, 60s and 70s. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's on this past week. Next show we're going to have uh, Melanie, singer from the 60s, yeah. brand new key. She was at Woodstock. And also Spanky McFarlane, but not the little rascal Spanky. She, the singer Spanky McFarlane, Sunday will never be the same. So we're going to have uh, two real classic singers from the 60s on this yeah. next show. The little rascal Spanky McFarlane would be a tough interview considering he died several years ago. Yeah, right. yeah true. Yes. Um, but I thought, you know, we could maybe... Um, Get a shovel. Like, like, the, like the zombie say. Spanky. Uh, long distance. Be yeah, tough, yeah, tough. Yeah. yeah. The walking Spanky. Dark humor. Yeah. Dark humor. <laughs> so. But anyway, I, I just want to say quickly, yeah. the beloved Rick Hendrickson has, has kept me above water with my radio <laughs> show. You. Just about every week, some, something that because of me goes wrong. Rick says, hang on, hang on. And then it's like, okay, we're back on. Back on. Know, yeah. So what's, so what's the weather like me. in Massachusetts? We keep hearing horror stories. Apparently it's better than it was here because I was driving up and all I see is snow. Uh, you guys must have got snow a few days ago or yeah. something. We haven't had snow in a few weeks now, but we got about eight feet of snow in a month. Yeah. Which is pleasant. tough if you're only seven feet tall. I live on the third <laughs> yes. floor and my, it was almost <laughs> up to my balcony. So Billy Barty like, had a rough time a few years ago with that. That's right. My dog don't like it. But that's, an obscure, just, that's an obscure <laughs> reference. Yeah, <laughs> I know the joke, but... <laughs> For people of a certain age, they'll know yeah. who Billy Barty was. Billy Barty was a very tiny actor. Yeah. He was right. in an Elvis movie. Okay. Was well, he really? Roused about. Okay. It was wow. a movie about a carnival. And he played, obviously. Makes sense, yeah. And we have, we have two great singers on the show later, Salvatore Russo and uh, Ikeani. Mm. And um, Ikeani, too. Ikeani, I Ikeani also. <laughs> I don't know why I have trouble with that name. And but you've known her for how, so long. That's right. Well, with my name, people still think my name is Mr. Evans, like it's my last name. So uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes I have I, to roll with these things. I know many people think Evan is your middle name. Your first name begins with an F, but... People say, Evan, Evan. That's Hitler. right, that's right. But I said, no, Evan's his first name. So that's, that's right. So, a little bit of humor well, there, folks. <laughs> we, um, we were talking on the, on the way in about great musical performances that we've seen because we had two singers with us. And I always go back to the Tammy show with James Brown, which some people think the greatest musical footage ever recorded. And I know you're a huge Elvis fan. You're a big Beatles fan. Beatles at Shea. Oh Beatles. What so what do you consider some of the greatest live performances, whether you were there or not? Well, um, for me, I got to see Sinatra 18 times between... What? 18 oh, times? Yeah, between 88 and 94. And um, once I saw him five nights in a row, wow. he did a couple at the Meadowlands, a couple at the Garden, and one at Nassau. Wow. Um, I've seen him in Vegas, Atlantic City, um, Philly, all over. So I've seen a lot of great ones, but Sinatra. seeing Sinatra, wow. just seeing him, the lights go out, and you just hear a voice that say, ladies and gentlemen, Frank Sinatra. And sometimes he'd be sitting in the orchestra pit with the fedora on holding a, uh, a sax, yeah. and then the light would go looking for him, and he'd just tip the hat. doesn't wow. get any better than that. Mm, there you go. And uh, Rick? It's a little newer, little, little newer than Sinatra, but um, Kid Rock and Bob Seger. Oh, yeah, that's and a one good would double bill. One would think that they wouldn't be together, but uh, they were together and they did some duets. And, yeah, I think that bill makes sense. And it's, yeah. it's, it's really awesome, uh, live, and they also film it for TV. And um, I'm a big fan of Kid Rock because he always pays respects to the older music like Hank Williams and Bob Seger and he's guys a before him. I like and, him. Yeah, and he always, it's not like he's just sitting there singing. He's moving around and interacting, and it's really important to me to, I don't want to just see somebody sitting there singing. Not that that's not okay, but it, you got to interact with me a little bit. All right. Yeah. All right. And uh, Steve? I, I'm a, a bona fide Beatle maniac. I saw, I've seen McCartney at least 15 times, but one show in Philly that he had was just the best. Rock show, not even the best McCartney show, the best rock show I've ever seen. So, 
And, and Ringo's all-star band, he always has great people in the band. I, I had the, Todd Rundgren, uh, Eric Carmen from the Raspberries, I mean, uh, Gary Brooker from Procol Harum. You know, rock shows like that. I mean, Paul and Ringo, not to sound uh, too Beatle maniacal, but that's the way I am. As a matter of fact, this tie is uh, based on Do You Want to Know a Secret? The song. All right, there you Thank go. Did you catch Ringo at uh, the Beacon last year? Yep. Yeah, I saw Absolutely. one of the shows. Excellent stuff. I saw when he was, uh, when um, it was his birthday and Paul was there. Oh, to okay. showed up at yeah. Radio City, that was. I'm sorry. Okay. That, when Paul and Ringo were there. Any uh, great movies you've seen lately? I saw a movie called Gloria from Chile. It came out last year about a uh, divorced woman in her 50s, and she meets a man in her 60s, and it's a romance for older people, and it was one of the greatest performances I've ever seen, and it's a tremendous movie called Gloria from Chile. Any good movies you've seen lately? Uh, I haven't been to the theater in a while. It could be on cable. Or... Yeah. Right now I'm um, doing the Lifetime movie thing. Really? Yeah, every once in a while I get into the Lifetime movies and I'll just like watch three of them in a row. Okay. I mean, they all kind of <laughs> Whatever works, become sorry. the same, <laughs> yeah. but you know, that's what I'm into right now. All right. And Rick? Uh, the felt? most recent one is Whiplash. I, know I heard it, once, it was great. Yeah, won so some Oscars or whatever, but yeah, it was really good. Steve? Yeah, like Rick, I'm trying to catch up on the Academy Award. I saw, uh, well, St. Vincent wasn't nominated. I don't see why Should've it wasn't. Been. Yeah, was St. Vincent, Boyhood was great. Uh, I, I thought Boyhood was the best film I've seen the past five years. Excellent. I didn't really dig Birdman, and then it, I guess it did really well. I, I maybe I didn't get I didn't it. it I, you know, I heard mixed things about it too, Rick. Yeah. Some people said, what was, what's the big deal? Well, speaking of movies, I'm going to show a very <clears throat> brief clip from a documentary that we produced. It's called Wrestling Then and Now. Kind of the theme, I, I used to teach kids. The theme was uh, mild-mannered teachers surrounded by all these colorful wrestlers. So we're going to show a very brief trailer for Wrestling Then and Now, which is available for streaming. Check this out, folks. From the associate producer of The Wrestler, Evan Ginsberg, comes Wrestling Then and Now. You know what? I think you look better with a mask on! Learn the super secret backstage moves of professional wrestlers. You know, he knows all those moves and can do everything, right? But <laughs> Innovative ways of dealing with sexual harassment. I actually did make contact on his nuts and it did hurt. <laughs> yourself what the hell is wrong with these people watch Saturday morning cartoons with Nikolai Volkov <laughs> what are you doing here Nikolai yeah save this child <laughs> basing likeness there <laughs> good looking guy hear the wisdom of killer Walter Kowalski <laughs> Say you become never, never be derogatory about yourself. If you're down, take the upper stand. I am Superman. I am the greatest. I am perfect. It's a time capsule of a film. Wrestling then and now. Streaming to your computer, to your phone, to your TV. Download now. All right, <laughs> we are back. Please support Wrestling Then and Now, available on streaming at walkertown.com. And as I stated earlier, E. Kiany and Salvatore Russo will be joining us in just a bit, two uh, great, great performers. And we're very proud of some of the music we've had on this show. We've had Martha Wash. Uh, we've had some legendary performers. And, uh, but I honestly think that the performance we had yesterday, we've done about 100... I should say last week. Um, we've had about 100 shows uh, for the past three or so years, and this was among the greatest musical performances we've ever been honored, honored to have on this show. So we're going to roll this uh, quick clip from last week's show, folks. Enjoy. Oh, well, all right, jump down, boy. <laughs> I have two of those. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready? Come and listen to the story about a man named Jeff. Who 
cool mountain here. But okay, uh, then one day he was shooting at some Went out through the brown came a bubbling cream. Oil that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well the first thing you know. Slow it down. Oh Jed's a millionaire. Help me Jed, Ken Rogue said, Jed, move away from there. They said California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. This is comedy. Hills, that is. Movie stars, swimming pools. Take it, Les. Come on, Jim. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I have set the bar high for today's musical guests, obviously. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's funny, Evan, I want to tell you that um, I have a, a pretty good music. There was a time when I had a little problem. I couldn't stop singing the song Delilah by Tom Jones. Right. So my wife, Sue, said, I want to go to the doctor. So I said, Doc, I keep singing Delilah by Tom Jones. He said, it's not unusual. <laughs> yeah. But Seriously, I'm folks. Okay. Steve, do you know that when you were singing that song last week, innocent kittens were flinging themselves off rooftops? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get up on the roof after that. You know, I have to apologize to Les Bayer. I mean, yeah. he was on a roll with his jokes and all, and I came up and just brought it to a skidding halt. That, was, that falls under the category, it was so bad it was good. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> kept, he kept saying, listen to the tempo, listen to the tempo. <laughs> Anyway, folks, um, Chinese food, right? we, we, we just <laughs> want to thank we just want to thank this panel. And uh, anybody want to plug anything? Um, How about a story, Evan? What's that? How about a story? Short story. Sure, sure. So many many years ago, Evan and I have been doing Legends Radio seventy five years. Or so. That's right. <laughs> Since the late twenties. And he always comes on. I'm sure he does it here. He uses the word eclectic mix, right? Eclectic okay. mix. One night we had SpongeBob. Uh, sake of the porn star in Lou Life, Louis Ramos. And I was thinking about that on the way up. That was just ridiculous. Yeah, that's as interesting a mix as you ever <laughs> yeah, gonna have. Low Life, so. Louis, Saker, and SpongeBob. Anyway, but yeah, that was my story. And I've I'm done so much radio, it. I don't remember having SpongeBob on. I did. I don't know that we knew it was SpongeBob until after Mike told us at the end. It's like, oh, by the way, that's a guy who does SpongeBob. We did not talk about, to him about SpongeBob <laughs> yeah, at all. We didn't know. <laughs> yeah. So. And anyway, Mike, you, you work in a very interesting place. You want to briefly plug that? Yeah, I work at an organization in the city called Fountain House, and we work with mentally ill adults, um, trying to get folks to transition back into society. Okay. And any website or contact info? Uh, Fountainhouse.org. Okay, great. And, and I, I went there one night, and yeah. it's a great organization. Yes. Great organization. I just want to quickly plug a friend's book. This is a practical guide to staying sane, creative, and focused, especially while job hunting in a bad economy. That's a mouthful. By Marsha Brandsdorfer. And that's at outskirtspress.com slash bookstore. Just go to outskirtspress.com. A practical guide to staying sane, creative, and focused, especially while job hunting in a bad economy. Highly recommended. This is Steve's book, CU and CCU, about his open heart surgery, apartment 4B in Brooklyn, about the turbulent E60s and 70s in Brooklyn, New York, East Flatbush. And without further ado, we're going to take a brief break. And we come back, we're going to have some great musical guests. Don't you dare go anywhere. Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we 15 years. We do a vast years. array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is.
Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicky is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicky is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. If you find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation, located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000, or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. I'm Tom Bealey from Madhouse TV, and when I'm not at the studio, I'm here at the Harrison Law Group. This is my real job. And this January 2015, Brett and I are putting together a show called Legal Straight Talk. It'll be aired on Cablevision as well as here at Madhouse TV. You need to tune in. This information that we're going to be giving the public is the real deal. It's all about what you should do, what you shouldn't do. So tune in this January 2015 for a new episode of Legal Straight Talk. back and we are joined by Ikayani. She is a singer. She is a model. She is a health advocate. I, I, very eclectic. This is what we like here at Legends TV. Well, I feel right at home then. There nice you to go. see you again. Evan. Same here, same here. And tell us what you've been up to. Well, it's it's been a very creative year. Um, I have been, uh, I'm signed to TG Records now. Right. Tom's got a new label based in the UK. And for those who don't know, that's Tom Glide. That's Tell us Tom about Glide. Him. Tom Glide is a longtime friend and a producer, a composer, and uh, sometimes he DJs. And um, he has just been doing really well over there. Actually, you would really like a lot of the releases that he's put out this year because it's like soul. All new right. soul. Uh, actually, I'm on an album that he just put out. It's called Smooth Winter Soul. So go. it's a combination of um, uh, you know, slow jams, new jazz, and uh, the, one of the tracks from Yoga on the Dance Floor, my album that's also on TG Records, is on that. You would really, really like that, Evan. It's right up your alley. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. Uh, big R&B aficionados here. We love that smooth. I was just at the stylistics and dramatics and you know, all those uh, Blue Magic just the other week at the uh, 70s Soul Jam. So that sounds like it's right up my alley. Yeah, but it's I nice because there is some fresh talent out there. So. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I, well, and so, and since, did you, do you like Earth, Wind, and Fire? Of course. Tom did a beautiful album called uh, Tom Glide and the Love All Stars with some of the crew from Earth, Wind, and Fire. Wow, wow. Um, and, you know, with the horn sections and Tim Owens, who is the voice of Earth, Wind, and Fire. And everything's on iTunes. The whole catalog is on iTunes and everywhere and else. And they're touring, they're touring this summer with Chicago, which I saw years ago. And it was a great combination because they actually play together throughout the show. You know, mm. they do their individual sets. Then they jam together at the end. And you have all these horns. It's amazing. That's amazing. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to see artists, like, get into that synergy, you know, kind of as they mature and get older. And the younger is, like, kind of more competitive spirit, you know, like, who's the best? But now it's more about... Uh, you know, collaboration mm -hmm. and having yeah. fun on stage. Yep. It's a great thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, you have some interesting elements on stage, and just a bit we're going to show a video of yours. But um, tell us a little about what you do. You mix uh, yoga and some very interesting elements. Yeah. Well, um, the album, the original album, which has like become a classic album now, it's called Yoga on the Dance Floor. Actually, I guess I could have called it bhakti yoga on the dance floor but that's a little bit long of a title and bhakti 
uh, is a, a Sanskrit term or an East Indian term for devotion, mm -hmm. specifically devotion that's meant for the Creator. So it's a very special kind of love. <laughs> it's a right. divine love. Right. And um, I wanted to brighten up the atmosphere, as it were, on, on Earth. And I've been studying the Vedas for about 30 years now. Wow. Um, so the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita, the Sri Upanishad, and there's a lot of really wonderful um, uh, erudite and saintly persons that have been very prolific songwriters, real soul songwriters that you would appreciate. So I thought, what could I do, you know, to kind of contribute to um, the deepening, you know, and the brightening of the yoga movement in the United States and worldwide? And so I curated different prayers from uh, the 15th century, the 18th century, the 19th century, and of course extant from those texts like the Bhagavad Gita, 5,000 years and up. So I sing in Sanskrit, but it's mostly up-tempo because Tom created a fantastic um, house music kind of uh, EDM soundtrack for me. So it's very, very, basically no one knows what I'm saying when they're on the <laughs> dance floor. But you know what you're saying. But I know what yes. I'm saying. But the good thing about, the wonderful thing about it is, is that, you know, it falls into that category of world music, club music, and had a lot of uh, DJs really giving it a lot of support. I want to give a shout out to DJ Greg Anderson, who's been playing Money to Burn relentlessly, and it's been getting a lot of airplay uh, here in New York, but also around the world in Brazil and South Africa and Spain and wow. Greece and the United Kingdom and France. Thank you. Thank you, DJ Greg. And so really appreciate that message may be coming through too, you know. I mean, you say, as, as people are just dancing and they can hear, you know, pick up certain phrases and things. Absolutely. You know, who knows what, what yeah, absolutely. What I mean, we're def up. yeah, we're definitely affected by the things we hear over and over and mm -hmm. over again. I mean, advertisers know that, right? Yeah. So they just... Yep. Keep pounding it in, pounding it in, and pretty soon, you know, you're singing that jingle whether you want to or not. Right. So that's exactly the idea yeah. behind um, mantra or, you know, affirmative or positive sound vibration is so, that repetition. So let me ask you something. I'm, um, I go to the gym regularly. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I practice Tai Chi and Qi Gong, but not as <laughs> religiously as I should. Um, what would convince me to try yoga as I've never done it before? Uh, well, you know, it's actually it's kind of related to what you're doing sure. already, you know, um, I think in terms of a meditative quality and also a physical movement. Uh, the practice of yoga, when you go through all the different asanas or the, the sitting postures, and there's hundreds of them, is that it is, it is a way for the human being to actually acknowledge the qualities like in the animal kingdom. For example, there's a great pose called the peacock pose, which is pretty strenuous to do, but peacocks actually have a really strong digestive tract where they can actually eat poison, like the venom from scorpions and rattlesnakes Rick, and not Rick be affected that. by yeah. it at all. Yeah. 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 Way to go. Yeah. They don't call him Rick the Peacock for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think, so, uh, so I think the idea there is to appreciate the animal kingdom and what they have, but also the idea is even if something bad happens to you or negative happens to you or sort of poisonous, toxic that happens to you, that just sort of by the process of yoga that you can turn a negative into a positive. Wow. So that's sort of the, um, I guess, psycho-spiritual aspect of it, okay. aside from getting maybe really good buns. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Well, always a goal. <laughs> so why don't we go to the video, and okay. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. And it's introduced by Mr. Tom Glide, so enjoy, folks. Tom Glide is the power of money, gives us the right to downgrade our environment, our seas, our mountains, our children. Let's do something all together and let's save the planet with that.
Actually, I was conceived, born and raised in New York City, and I wanted to do a cover of Money to Burn because it addresses an environment and a culture right near uh, where I live, and that would be Wall Street. I live in the belly of the beast, as we say. I wanted to juxtapose the song with a Sanskrit verse, with, um, with a wisdom text about how we can change and view our environment in proper you know, perspective so we don't ravage the earth. Now with the People's Climate March and 400,000 people uh, coming to New York City, possibly even more, and knowing that that statistic probably only represents a tenth of the people that would have liked to have been here, we offer this song to you as an anthem as a rallying cry, as something to give you encouragement. All right, money to burn. And we'd like to acknowledge our mutual friend Michael McHugh, who helped write that. Yes, he did. Yes, it's uh, it's kind of like a co-write. I added the the Sanskrit.
part of it from the Sri Upanishad, which is a very, um, a very holistic, uh, don't be greedy um, piece to it. Uh, actually, I, I remember bugging Mike for about three years, saying, this is a really good song. Someone should cover the song. You should get someone to cover the song. Right. And then after three years, I realized I was a singer and that I should actually, yeah, that <laughs> I should actually the cover light the song. Bulb, the light bulb went on. The light bulb went on. See the power of mantra, Steve. Uh, yeah. So that's, that track is doing really well. And um, there's actually a really another wonderful version of it that you can see on the card by Bodhisattva. He's a DJ and a composer um, uh, sort of based in Belgium with Congolese roots. And that one's called Ancestral Soul Mix. And that's... that's uh, People are really grooving to that, too. So. While, we, while we were listening to it, I, I mentioned that. It's very hypnotic, too, which is a nice calming type of... Uh, and that's pretty much what, what you're hoping to evoke, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's energizing, but it's energizing in a kind of a soothing, hypnotic mm -hmm. way. Right. So it's yeah. really the best of both worlds, like yoga. <laughs> I have to try it, seriously. Okay. Seriously. Do you we'll go to a class together. I'm sorry, do you meditate? When you do yoga, is that part of yoga, or is that just completely different, TM? Uh, well, um, I mean, all forms of yoga are meditative. There's actually eight forms of yoga. Uh, the yoga is compared to a ladder, and there's different rungs on the ladder. Uh, prana, niyama, asana, you know, all these different things. And bhakti um, is considered to be kind of like the culmination of yoga because it's it's not only meditation and sound. Like when I'm actually singing these songs, it's actually a yogic practice of singing the songs with the, with the added ingredient of it being a direct offering, you know, to, to the creator. Mm -hmm. um, does that answer your question? Yes. Uh, yeah. Do you have more to the question that I didn't well, answer? Well, uh, when, when I think of... Steve looks befuddled. It's okay. Yeah. Yes. That's just... Yeah. That goes 24-7, but... No, when I think of... Transcendental meditation, mm -hmm. I just think of people kind of within yes. himself or herself. Yes, Well, this is transcendental meditation, but you're right to point out the distinction because within yoga tradition, there's actually sort of two different types of approaches by the individual. One is sort of very evangelical, as it were, kind of like what I'm doing, that we're actually going, kind of going out there and telling people about it and sharing the culture and sharing the music and sort of sharing the practice. But there's also a very strong and equally bona fide path of people s being in seclusion and sitting mm. what you would call bhajan or bhajan kutir. And this actually uh, sort of naturally happens for most people uh, if they're following this model or this path at the end of life. You know, when you're, you're kind of retired or you know, gee, maybe I only have, you know, five or six years left. So you can actually just kind of go into your meditation and really going further into cultivating your personal relationship with the Supreme, that relationship that you have. So, yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. Okay. That's very valid. Well, please mm -hmm. plug any social media. and. and okay. Well, um, as I think people saw on the end of the video, uh, yoga on the Dance Floor um, is on Twitter, it's abbreviated. Uh, on Facebook, it's just Akayani, E-K-A-Y-A-N-I, that's my music page. There's also links to that when you go down the apps for the videos and for the music clips. And also I have a blog called Yoga on the Dance Floor. I'm on Pinterest. Uh, I'm on Instagram. A kind of musical yoga. That's a lot of fun. I love Instagram. It's great taking pictures. I, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm everywhere. There you go. <laughs> and you're going to stay for the next segment when we yeah. bring Salvatore Russo, a very eclectic artist. Don't you dare go anywhere, folks. Right. Thank you. Okay. Stretching under sedation or manipulation under anesthesia is a very gentle, very precise procedure to very slowly release any scar tissue that is formed as a result of a traumatic injury. Many people ask, how does this work? Will I get hurt? Will you stretch me too far? We only stretch the body part to its normal range of motion. After completing the post-MUA rehabilitation program, 
It's very common that our patients say to us, hey, I can play ball with my kid again. Hey, I can bowl again. Hey, I can enjoy hiking again. This is what makes it rewarding to us as practitioners. We're going to do a live commercial. Hi, I'm Renee Marie. I'm the uh, president of Language of Love Incorporated Foundation. I'm really happy um, to tell you that we're going to be doing a Language of Love telethon on March 29, 2015 from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please look for uh, the location on my, um, my website, ReneeMarieLanguageOfLove.org. And once again, it's Renee Marie Language of Love org, and the show um, will be on hosted on the Madhouse TV. It really is important for you to um, be aware of strokes and aphasia. Strokes is the third leading cause of death in the in America, and the first leading cause of disability. And it really is something that plays no favoritism, and it also really comes when you're not expecting. Nobody expects to have a stroke and nobody expects to suffer from aphasia and it really does play a huge, make a huge impact in your life and change your life in one split second. So we look forward to having everyone join us uh, once again on March 29, 2015 from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. and you can follow us on uh, Renee Marie Language of Love org. Once again, it's Renee Marie Language of Love org, and we look forward to seeing you. God bless. Could switching to Geico really save you 15 percent or more on car insurance? Do dogs chase cats? <laughs> Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? This is me, GMC, in the place to be, the greatest MC in history. There will never be an MC greater than me. And right about now, the only place for you to be is with the one and only man how you be. You are the man. Right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, and we are joined by my old friend Salvatore Russo, singer, songwriter, and author. It's true. There you go. Yeah. Tell us a little about yourself. My, um, well, I've been doing music for about 18 years in, all over New York City. Um, it's been kind of affected by the fact that I own a drive. I've just been confined to Crash Mansion, you know, pianos, the 169 bar, Siberian was still around. I'm just kind of sticking around New York. Um, and I've been writing longer than I've uh, been doing music. And I, I love doing music, but music kind of, like, it took over my life for about 15 years. Like, I, I've, and I've been, like, and I didn't get time, chances to send out my writing to anyone. I was just like, oh, I'm going to try to rock out. But the problem with being a musician that writes your own songs and not having a whole ensemble, like, I wish it was in an ideal situation. You know, when you're a kid and you have neighbors, you'd be like, oh, bring your bass, bring your drum over. We're all just going to play, and it's just going to be beautiful. Like, that's what everybody wants. But this day and age, if you're writing the songs... You have to pay a drummer, so I basically have to pay a drummer $100 per gig. And uh, sometimes I make some money, but a lot of times I don't make money at the door, so it's kind of like I'm paying for my dream. So that's kind of why I'm winding down from playing live electric performances. Once in a while, I'll play a, a few acoustic songs. My musical career is winding down, though. It started off with something called Land of the Silver Jets. Um, it's all one word. It's on iTunes and Spotify. And then after that ended in like 2005 or something, or 2007, 2008, I started, I uh, transformed into Drunken Sentimental, um, and that's primarily <laughs> like me, that. yes, yeah. that's me and the drummer that I pay, play, um, pay to play along, and sometimes there are friends that help out, um, my friend Will Donnelly plays some organs on some tunes for me, I'm really grateful for that, he's really good at what he does, and sometimes people do come and do it without money, but basically rocking out live and being electric was just, I couldn't afford it, and now I, then I finally learned, hey, I could actually just send PD, PDF to Amazon and I can start getting my books out, in my life I've lost three manuscripts, Three manuscripts in my life. So what I do to make up for this is every you year... You lost them. What I lost mean? them. I had handwritten manuscripts. They're lost. You literally they, lost I books. I literally lost books. And you know how aggravating that is? Yeah. So to make up for that pain, I put three books a year on Amazon just to let you know that I'm not 
fooling around, and I'm very serious about what I do. And they will continue to be three books a year on Amazon until I stop and I decide to write my ultimate ham on rye autobiographical book, kind of like oh, your Charles apartment for Yes, he's the man. I have 16 books by Charles Bukowski. The most honest, direct writer. If you, I have a poetry book called Yours and Mine All the Time. If you like Charles Bukowski, look up Yours and Mine All the Time by Salvatore Peter Russo. It's on Amazon. It's under $10. It's 258 pages. covers the last 15 years of my life, also my separation, a whole bunch of emotional stuff that's just very entertaining. And the poetry is so honest and raw, it'll break your heart. And if you like Bukowski, you should read it. Otherwise, you're missing out. Don't wait for a thousand people to talk about it. Go first. Be ahead of them. Steve, this is going to be the easiest interview I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I can't just wait. keep going, Sal. I can't, wait till we, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait till we come back from the commercial and the show's right. on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, wait, 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. I have 65. 65 of my songs are on SoundCloud. If you type in soundcloud.com, the hyphen drunken, just type in soundcloud.com, the backslash the hyphen drunken. I have 65 songs on SoundCloud. I have 28 songs on iTunes and Spotify as Land of the Silver Jets. And I have a blog that I write called Notes of a Noise Making Drinker. You could just Google that or go to Salvatore P. Russo. <laughs> Um, dot blogspot.com. The last thing I wrote on my blog was why the band Fish needs to be stopped. Because they do. Thank you. Why is Land of the Silver Jets one word? Can you explain it's just, this? I'm just, it's just more artistic if it's one word, you know? The more, sometimes I just figure, I have a whole expression to one sentence, it's like hard sex. You when know, you, it gets right to you. Over there, that's what I'm talking to. When you're drunk all the time, that's, everything just kind of mushes together. <laughs> yeah. I don't get drunk, though. I want you to know I have a very good tolerance. I, I, my, my father doesn't handle his liquor as well as I do. I handle my liquor very well. I don't get drunk. I'm not ridiculous. Especially at 11 a.m. Yeah, I do. No, no, I'm, I'm, kidding. Kidding. I'm so sober, I'm and this is when I'm the weirdest. It, it when I'm sober, very well. this yeah. is me at my scariest right now. You know, so Rick, Rick had something to say. What was, the, uh, what was the change that happened when you went from the type of music you were doing to the, what you called drunken sentimental? What caused Do you know that? what? The, what changed it was that I just had like, I had four albums as Landon Silverjet, and I put a thing on iTunes. As soon as it was on iTunes and Spotify, I felt like the world got its fill of it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try to do something else right now, and I want a different name. And I think the Drunken Sentimentals, I, you know, I think it's the, the, one of the best names, original names I can think of, because you know that when everybody has a few drinks, they start thinking about stuff, and they start getting wishy-washy, and they start getting sentimental. Hence, the drunken sentimental. And everybody thinks I'm an alcoholic, and even though I cannot drink you, I'm not an alcoholic. Okay? okay. All right. Spoken like a Good true alcoholic. Good to know. Good to know. Wow. 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 Yes. Yeah. Sort of like Tom Waits. Uh, I love Tom Waits. Tom, Tom Waits, Waits is God. Mark actually, Excel. as far as musicians go, Tom Waits is God. Everybody else is kind of below Tom Waits. I thought James Brown was. Well, that's, your, that's you yeah, and me. Okay. You know? Let's get Tom Waits and All James right. Brown on the same stage. That's what John Lennon was. Let's get Tom Waits back to New York, everyone. James Brown is dead, though. Yeah. I'll tell you a funny John story. Hologram. Yeah. I have a singer friend, yeah. John Lennon and Cotton J. Hologram. Smith, yeah. and he, his arm is tattooed with legendary R&B musicians. So he has like James Brown, Al Green, Marvin Gaye, Smokey, yeah. and all of a sudden it's Tom Waits, and I'm like, what's wrong with this <laughs> he's picture? Got a lot of soul. And he, he he's loves got Tom a lot of soul. Waits. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's got a lot of soul. He sound, The thing about Tom Waits that is glorious is he doesn't sound like a white man, and I don't mean that people that sound like white men sound bad. I sound very white, and I'm from South America. I'm the whitest person you'll ever meet. But the point is that Tom Waits has this really, his soul is so, there's so much depth that it's almost like, it's almost like if a dog could sing, there are certain notes like growls and real emotional stuff that's going on with Tom that is just, it goes beyond a white person, which is why Tom Waits is God. There you go. Yep. Steve, great white singers. I, I can name that on one hand. <laughs> well, who do you like? No, you're shallow, you're white. Don't talk to me about, okay? Yeah. <laughs> great white singers. Well, uh, uh, four guys from Liverpool were pretty good. Steve Ludwig. Got it by voices. Bob Say yes, Steve Ludwig. <laughs> Lead singer got by voices is pretty amazing. I always love Johnny Maestro. Roy Orbison. Roy Orbison. Oh, yeah, Roy Orbison. Johnny Maestro well, was great. Jay Black in his Leonard prime. Leonard Cohen definitely has his moments. Leonard Cohen. Mm -hmm. Sixto Rodriguez, who I finally discovered thanks to this guy right here. Really? Yeah. Tony, totally. I don't him. remember that. You <laughs> okay. mentioned him on our first interview on the oh, okay. radio. Oh, okay. I can replay it. All right. All yeah. right. So what are, what are some career highlights? Um, actually, <laughs> you know what? So I, it's weird. One of my favorite live shows is Landed the Silver... Well, as Landed Silver Jets was at Crash Manson. Um, but the thing that happened was my uncle died the same night. So that was one of the best shows I ever had, but I didn't realize the next day that my uncle died. But um, being on the radio with you was a highlight. I mean, I, when I played Crash Mansion, that was a highlight. Having music on iTunes and Spotify is definitely a highlight. I mean, anything that basically proves that I'm not delusional in my art is a highlight. As long as I don't just think it's me and I'm the only guy that thinks I'm good. Like, if I know that other people are listening or that it's getting through, it's a highlight. 
And my musical career is kind of winding down now, the drunk and sentimental. The first two albums are at SoundCloud. There's an album called Nectar of the Underground that's two parts. I have to talk about this really briefly because I told sure. you I would. Nectar of the Underground is the last album I'm recording. I record everything on a four track. It couldn't be any more pure. And Nectar of the Underground was about eight songs. It ended like a year ago. And I knew it was going to take longer because I had a separation that I was dealing with and a lot of emotional stuff. And I put out books in the meantime. So like Nectar of the Underground Part 2 is a much darker side of the album, which is going to be at Bandcamp soon. Nectar of the Underground Part 1 is presently at Bandcamp. Part 2 is up there, but there's only two songs. There's still eight more that I'm putting up. So this is like, it's like a math lesson. It's a, it's a song. <laughs> yeah. it's a song. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what happened, though. While I was recording Nectar of the Underground Part 2, my freaking four-track broke, which was a real treat. Now you go and find an analog four-track. And then to, to make it worse, wow. when I was done recording everything... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> then to make it worse, I, my cassette player broke when I was mixing them down, so I had to order a cassette player. And this is actually funny. I was on Amazon. I'm like, oh, there's a cassette player. I call up the deal. I'm like, oh, it has the red and white wires, so I can mix down my four-track tunes into the cassette. He's like, yeah, sure. I get the cassette player, there's no friggin' output for my speakers, and there's nothing for me to plug my earphones in, and it drove me mad. It was like, I had this cassette player that could record, and I was able to mix down the album by 4-track to the cassette player, but I still haven't heard the friggin' thing. But I know how it sounded mixing, and I'm friggin' proud of it. And that's Nectar of the Underground Part 2. That will be on Bandcamp soon. And if you like, if you like what you hear tonight, check out Facebook, The Drunken Sentimental. I'm one man, I need more likes. Facebook.com, The Drunken Sentimental. Go there, hit like, I'll thank you, we can talk. I'm not above you. I'm with you. Work with me. Well, we, we got the plugs out of the way. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell us briefly about your blog. Um, my blog is called Notes of a no Noise-Making Drinker. And I write, about, <laughs> I write about things that you're all thinking about in, this, in your spare time. One of my most well, you usually think about pro wrestling because we're yeah. not normal. <laughs> but, uh. one of my, some of my favorite classic blogs, I have one blog about why I wish that Homer Simpson would beat the shit out of uh, Peter Griffin. I have another blog about you know, what music you should listen to and how and what kind of drugs and what kind of situation you could be on and what works. It's just like how to listen to 20 something different bands. It's hilarious. You should read it. It's really good. Well, I couldn't speak last night. Yeah. I was thinking about it. Almost. <laughs> That's and, right. And the most recent one was Why Fish Needs to Be Stopped. But I mean, a lot of sometimes I have movie reviews of things by Quentin Tarantino. And I don't know how anybody badmouthed Birdman. That was definitely, I'll tell people this till I'm dead. That was the most, the smartest movie, like the most breakthrough. I love Boyhood yes. too. I saw Boyhood. Boyhood's I, But great. I admit, I did not watch Boyhood straight through because it was so long I watched in parts. But I have to say that Birdman was such a beautiful presentation of insanity and what an artist goes through and what it's like to be in New York City and the way that the shots and the way they went behind the scene of the theater. They brought the beauty of the theater to a film and Edward Norton's performance in that is sick. That whole movie is brilliant and original. Nobody else has done anything like that. It was time for Michael Keaton to do something because I didn't really, haven't heard about him since Multiplicity, which is why I think the part was written for him. And I think that was definitely the greatest movie that came out last year. And for once, the Academy picked the right movie because Inglorious Bastards totally should have won Best Picture years ago, but they didn't. For once, they picked the movie that I wanted. They don't always do that. You, you know, know what the Academy is. If you did a half hour movie review show, you could review like 4,000 movies as fast <laughs> as you speak. Like, you know? Yeah. yeah. Can I talk about one other thing before I sure, go? Sure, sure. <laughs> I want to talk about something with all artists in general while I have a moment here, okay? Like, here's the scene. A lot of artists are better when they're paying their dues. Bon Iver's first album for Emma Forever Ago is a friggin' masterpiece, okay? Then he got people into him, he started making more money, and he made his second album, and it sounds like his balls were cut off. And all the song titles are basically city names. There's not, it's not even personal. And it's just like, and the same kind of thing happened with Arcade Fire. When Funeral came out, they break through. I was totally in love with them. I wasn't crazy about the suburbs, but then they made the album Reflector. I wrote a blog about that. That album is an insult. When you're a great band and you just know that people will eat whatever we do and you just put out whatever just because they'll take it, that's when it becomes garbage. You have to keep trying. You have to pretend. You have to work and strive. Another example of how this happened in film, I'm almost done. Okay. Paul Thomas Anderson. <laughs> yes. Okay. Paul Thomas Anderson directed Boogie Nights. He Boogie directed Nights was great. Blonde. Yes, he directed Will Paul Thomas Anderson is a freaking genius, okay? And then he put out this movie called Inherit Vice, which I actually saw in the city when it premiered. A friend got me a ticket. My friend Eric Alexander, thank you. He got me a ticket to see this, and I tell you, Inherit Vice is the most obnoxious film ever made. And the most annoying thing is that it looks beautiful and the soundtrack looks like a Paul Thomas Anderson movie, but it's impossible to follow the plot. I've watched it high and I've watched it sober. It's still impossible to follow. He doesn't make any effort. It's so pretentious. It's garbage. Paul Thomas Anderson, you can do better. The artistic society is pissed and I'm representing them, Paul Thomas Anderson. We're coming after you. Not really. We, I just wanted to say yeah, that. We can't end <laughs> on a better note than a threat to Paul well, Thomas Anderson. Because yes. <laughs> yes. uh, you can do I'm, better. And if artists can do better, don't just assume your fans are going to eat garbage. Make good stuff for you. Otherwise, you're messing up our society. Wow. Seriously. Wow. Well, I just it's like our duty. 
I'd just like to say that this was the best interview I've ever watched. So, <laughs> so when we come back, when we come back, not one but two live musical performances, and I know you're going to, you're going to want to see them in action. Don't go anywhere, folks. More of Legends TV. Thank you. I think this is a good time to tell you. You're doing okay, Mom. I can call you Mom, right? I know we haven't known each other very long, but you seem like a real keeper. You're not perfect. There was that strained carrots incident, but you're trying. You pick up my bottle every time I toss it out of my stroller. That's high comedy to an eight-month-old. You hum the Barber of Seville when you wash my hair. So cool. And your rubdowns are out of this world. Anyway, I want you to know how much I appreciate you. You know, right? How much I love you? You're doing okay, Mom. Are you planning an event and want to include entertainment, but you're not sure where to turn? Act1Entertainment.net has provided over 1,500 events with quality, affordable live entertainment at private parties, corporate affairs, festivals, bike rallies, and more. Act1 will fit into your budget. They're friendly, reliable, and do all the legwork for you. They take all major credit cards. Log on to Act1Entertainment.net for a free, no-obligation price quote, or call 631-758-3505 for a brochure. You'll be happy you did. Being a fireman is more than just putting out blazes and giving kittens CPR. Sometimes my duty demands I fan the flames, like when a call comes in from a lady who needs immediate assistance. Maybe she needs help with that computer thing. Maybe she wants to go antique. Could be as simple as understanding that walking in heels is... It's hard. Aussi simple que l'été dernier à Paris. C'est sympa. Maybe it's ladies' night in, and she wants a simple, delicious recipe for margaritas with a twist. First, a can of limeade. Now hold on to this. You'll be using it. Side note, kittens make everything better. Next, add water. Now, a bottle of light beer. It's not shh. Trust me, I'm a professional. And last and most important, Salsa Blue Tequila. Now, mix it up. Ole. Yes, that's what I'm trained for. Whether it's to help her choose leggings or pants, telling her leggings are pants, or discussing leggings and jeggings versus pant pegging at her next ladies' night in, I'll come to the rescue. Don't call me a hero. Just call me. Let me know what time. Hi, 
my name is Salvatore Russo. This is a tune by the Drunken Sentimental off the last album, Nectar of the Underground Part 2, which is a band camp. And this is a song about separation called Away from the Sun. The camera's rolling. Things they always start so sweet. All the colors so vibrant. I guess I had to make a few There are other men in this world But there are things they will not do for you At least not without compensation Not without getting something back They won't just give it all away she left dying on the tracks It was all so cinematic It was all so warm and kind I was bled into months and We almost lost track of the time And now the flower it dies I've watched it day after day And it hurts the way you forget all the things you used to say Run better, 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 run better Let her run, let her run, let her run Away from the sun, away from the sun, away from the sun, away from the sun Let her run, let her run, let her run We'd stay and drink, get high and watch cartoons and Turn our mattress into a planet that we'd inhabit It's all start so cinematic Then it's always and so tragic So if anything sounds weird, you can all just blame the G-string. Hold on. Come on, E. Come on. Come on, E. Are you ready? Come on, E. Almost there. Just hold on one second. All right. This is an instrumental called Endurance, and I'm going to do one more song. It's about a minute and 30 seconds. 
This is Mental Total Endurance. It's on the second Drunken Sentimental album called Songs for a Brighter Apocalypse. And this tune is called Endurance. <laughs> called the Stardust Fucking Memories, which is going to be at Bandcamp soon. The first two tracks are already there. Uh, check out soundcloud.com, The Drunken. Go to Facebook, like the page, The Drunken Sentimental. I will write you a personal message thanking you for visiting the page, because I am real. And this last song is the last song on my final album, after uh, 18 to 20 years of recording music. This is the last song I'm ever recording, and it's about finding inner strength, overpowering leg cramps. Just kidding. Finding inner strength, um, this tune is called You Are Not Alone. Okay. We are on the sea. You're still here with me. Somehow I know it's where we need to be. You are not alone. You are not alone. We are not far from home. You are not alone. We are 
Donuts are always fresh. I made the donuts. We make them at least twice every day. Time to make the donuts. Not a few kinds, like supermarkets. Made the donuts. Time to make the donuts. But up to 52 varieties. The donuts. <laughs> Time to make the donuts. I made the donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. Up to 52 varieties, fresh day and night. No supermarket can say. Dunkin' Donuts are always fresh. I made the donuts. We make them at least twice every day. Time to make the donuts. Not a few kinds, like supermarkets. Made the donuts. Time to make the donuts. But up to 52 varieties. The donuts. <laughs> Time to make the donuts. I made the donuts. Dunkin' Donuts, up to 52 varieties, fresh day and night. No supermarket can say. Hi, I'm Tom Mealy from Madhouse TV, and when I'm not at the studio, I'm here at the Harrison Law Group. This is my real job. In this January 2015, Brett and I are putting together a show called Legal Straight Talk. It'll be aired on Cablevision as well as here at Madhouse TV. You need to tune in. This information that we're going to be giving the public is the real deal. It's all about what you should do, what you shouldn't do. So tune in this January 2015 for a new episode of Legal Straight Talk. Let our creativity work for you. We design business cards, brochures, annual reports, newsletters and magazines, menus and programs, flyers and mailers, signs and posters and more. We also do voiceovers. First impressions matter. Make yours count with an expressive voice artist. Distinctive, warm, soothing, natural delivery that can add believability and appeal to any audio project. Contact us to discuss how we can make your project a success. Sierra Graphics. That's info at sierragraphics.com. Stretching under sedation or manipulation under anesthesia is a very gentle, very precise procedure to very slowly release any scar tissue that is formed as a result of a traumatic injury. Many people ask, how does this work? Will I get hurt? Will you stretch me too far? We only stretch the body part to its normal range of motion. After completing the post-MUA rehabilitation program, it's very common that our patients say to us, hey, I can play ball with my kid again. Hey, I can bowl again. Hey, I can enjoy hiking again. This is what makes it rewarding to us as practitioners. Yeah. 
Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? It's just me, TMC, and the place to be, the greatest MC in history. There will never be an MC greater than me. And right about now, the only place for you to be is with the one, the only man, how <laughs> you think you are the man. Are you planning an event and want to include entertainment, but you're not sure where to turn? Act1Entertainment.net has provided over 1,500 events with quality, affordable live entertainment at private parties, corporate affairs, festivals, bike rallies, and more. Act1 will fit into your budget. They're friendly, reliable, and do all the legwork for you. They take all major credit cards. Log on to Act1Entertainment.net for a free, no-obligation price quote, or call 631-758-3505 for a brochure. You'll be happy you did. Hey, my name is Akayani, and I'm signed to TG Records. And today I'm going to do a song entitled Here's the Light. It's going to be released uh, about mid-April. So look for that single um, on Facebook, Akayani, E-K-A-Y-A-N-I. This is a little love song. Uh, for inner guidance. Hope you like it. of Sri Chaitanya give me shelter under his lotus feet. The birds are flying through the air. I watch them fly beyond despair. I watch them fly beyond despair. I watch them fly beyond despair They bring a message from the sky Magical words for you and I They bring a message from the sky Magical words for you and I Words that heal Watch me kneel In fact you are so close to me My Lord Remove my blindness I can't see Here's the light inside of me Here's the light inside of me Here's the light inside of me You're the light inside that shines inside of me My Lord, He grants me liberty I feel so calm 
within this material universe, pure devotional service to fulfill the desire of Sri Chaitanya, give me shelter under his lotus feet. people get it. <laughs> <laughs> 